And welcome back to The Real Side Radio, hour number two with Dave Sussman sitting in the chair for Joe Messina. And it is great to be back with everybody. And thank you all for joining us at realside.com as well as the Facebook room. And if you wanted to call in, and I do believe we have a caller, 855-732-5563. I, do, I usually don't do this. I usually change the subject on top of every hour. But I just came off of watching Bernie Sanders at this climate change town hall thing that they just had on CNN. And I just spent about 20 minutes or... 15 minutes just riffing on and, and really ranting on this situation where basically a Democratic voter asked him, they said, uh, what can we do about population control in this world? Because there's too many humans on Earth and, and it's affecting the climate change problems that we're having and the environment and everything. And Bernie Sanders basically said, well, go ahead. Let's hear a little clip. Get involved uh, in birth control to me is totally absurd. So I think especially in poor countries around the world, uh, where women do not necessarily want to have large numbers of babies and where they can have the opportunity through birth control to control the number of kids they have, something I very, very strongly uh, support. Uh, I want to... Uh, okay, we missed... We, we, we caught the end bit of that there where he had a smattering of applause. But right before that, he essentially said that we need to fund abortions to poor third world countries. Absolutely horrifying. And uh, to speak about this, I believe we've got Ed from Washington on the line here. How you doing, Ed? Yeah, real quick, like you were spot on when you talked about overall this kind of thinking is genocide. Because that's exactly, but think of it their point of view, the liberals who want to change our country into a socialist government. If you can hold the population internally so no one can be born into this country to know the freedoms that they have and you bring in people that are under the thumb of socialists they've already been they've already been a mindset to accept a socialist government if if this country can turn it turn it around to be socialist then you don't have to worry about people in this country having a population that knows the freedoms and support the freedoms of our country because you're trying to convince the population that they don't need to be born in this country, that you just invite people that are already uh, familiar with socialism, so they'll accept the new socialist United States. You don't sound shocked at this, because when I heard this tonight from Bernie Sanders, who is the third highest uh, leading candidate on the Democratic Party right now, Socialist Democrat Party, he'd want to call it for himself, uh, you don't seem stunned by, by this uh, transparency, which we're now starting to kind of see uh, across a lot of different uh, uh, candidates. You know, the fact that they're just openly stating things, racist things about uh, how they feel about this president and, and, and uh, anybody that votes for this president. President. They want us to be blacklisted and everything else. But you don't seem shocked by this. Well, the only thing that hasn't shocked me is I've, I've been looking for this for a long time. The only reason why they're coming out with this is because they know that they need support. They're dying in so many areas because of these new uh, evolutions that they're coming out that they're trying to get anybody they can for support. Now, those people that get grant money for all of those facilities that, that sponsor like Planned Parenthood, they're obviously going to be voting for someone who wants to support their jobs, that grant money. So that's what they're doing this for. Yeah. They're asking, and, and the, that little thing about, well, women uh, have been in other countries not to have more babies. Um, the thing of it is that position, the reason they're trying to hide the fact that they want our country to first adopt mass genocide so they don't have people being born uh, in this country that will already appreciate the freedoms we have because that would be an objection to the way that they want our country to be, which is to become socialist so the government runs the people. Yeah, yeah, you see, he's, absolutely. He's, he's, it's kind of a red herring. Right. right. Ed, thanks. I appreciate you taking the time. You've given us a call from Washington State. And, uh, you know, I couldn't imagine if Trump said something like this. If Trump said, you know, essentially to the effect of <laughs> let's kill poor people, uh, you know, so that population control can impact uh, environmental policy around the world. What do you think the left would say on this? And, you know, the argument is going to be that, well, Bernie was talking about birth control and not abortion and no, he was talking about the Mexico City policy and the treaty, and this was about government funding abortion.
So uh, you, you, the, the, the fight is, and you're going to hear this right now on social media, ladies and gentlemen, so prepare yourself when you are, if you are going to be a keyboard warrior and you're going to get out there and fight it, they refer to the Mexico City policy. The Mexico City policy is specifically about the U.S. government using taxpayer funds to fund abortions overseas. Bottom line. So don't let anybody come in there and tell you, oh, don't believe your lying ears and your lying eyes. Bernie didn't say that. Of course he said that. And, uh, you know, I, I again, I, I don't usually go over hours and, and, and continue the subjects here because we've got a fascinating guest coming up here in the next, uh, in, in, uh, right after the break. We're going to be talking about how folks like you, like myself, uh, can get involved in politics and how we can change the world from a local perspective. And that doesn't mean you know running for office this means basically getting out and helping people understand what we what this fight is about we have to get people to understand what bernie and kamala and elizabeth and biden if he lasts want to do to our culture and our society to our traditions to our history and for our future and for our future children and so uh, stick around because I think uh, you're going to find this to be a very fascinating interview. Her name is Anna Timmer. And uh, you may remember Anna. We're going to play this right after the break. She actually stood up at Justin Amash's town hall and uh, handled him pretty well. And it went viral. So stay tuned after the break. We'll be right back here. Dave Sussman at Real Side Radio. Stick through the commercials, folks. This is going to be fun. Stock market up, stock market down. Gold, silver, stocks, bonds, Bitcoin, real estate, cash, and coffee cans. How can I protect my money? Recently, 20 billionaires have come out saying the market will correct. It has to. In 2007, warnings from the Bank of International Settlements about the impending market adjustment went unheeded by many. The bank is making those same predictions again, but my friends over at Landmark Capital can help. Joe Messina here, host of The Real Side with Joe Messina. David Fisher and his team can guide you through the different investment opportunities that would be right for you. Whether it's precious metals, stocks, bonds, real estate, cryptocurrency, or just burying cash in the backyard, let David and the people at Landmark Capital help. No sales pressure. They can tell you in short order if they can help. Give them a call at 844-715-7311. 844-715-7311. Get their free newsletter by signing up at LandmarkGold.com or call now, 844-715-7311. Have you checked your Google search results lately? Search results are usually the first impression that people form of you or your business. So make sure that they create a positive impression with Reputation Defender. What the internet says about you can have a big impact on your life and your livelihood, even if it's not true. Fortunately, you can now control how you look online and in online search results with Reputation Defender. Call 800-831-0771 now. That's 800-831-0771 for your free reputation analysis. If you have negative material from an ex-employee, upset patient, or former client, newspaper, article, legal issue, social media, or other source showing up in your search results, you can combat it with Reputation Defender. Our dedicated experts in patented technology can help make your online search results look their best. Call 800-831-0771 to learn more. 800-831- And Dave Sussman and Chair here for Joe Messina at Real Side Radio. And you can find us all over the Fruited Plant on the GCN network on 53 stations as well as Salem radio uh, and uh, you know I get I, I, I get I'm flabbergasted and for me to be speechless uh, in these moments is, is a rarity but again I'm everybody's just now starting to learn about what it is that Bernie Sanders said in this climate change town hall thing on CNN and I wanted to get straight into some other issues but I'd, I want to just touch upon this for one minute with our guest here Anna Timmer Anna Timmer worked uh, he was, she was an activist for Justin Amash in uh, Justin Amash's district in Michigan and uh, she is uh, now focused on talking 
talking to regular citizens, helping them get involved in 2020, uh, focusing on on what's right and what's wrong and who we should vote for and how people can get engaged. And uh, Anna, before we get into the whole Justin Amash thing, uh, I know you just learned about this yourself. Any any reaction to what we just heard from uh, Bernie Sanders, who basically is using abortion, abortion, uh, to say that we need to fund abortions to the poor third world countries for population control and climate change? Uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm just learning about this, but this is absolutely horrifying and despicable, and this is something that the left has been promoting for decades. They've been promoting population control, um, you know, as an environmental agenda for years, but uh, it hasn't been mainstreamed until now. They haven't come out and said it until now. Um, and uh, I, I just think more and more the left is taking off their mask of what they really want to push. And um, this is kind of Mar Margaret Sanger's legacy coming yeah. to fruition. That's exactly what we were just talking about. You're right on point. And I think exactly uh, what you just said. They're taking off the mask. They are no longer faking it. They are saying exactly what they've always thought. They want to take away your guns. They want to do all of the things that we've said that they wanted to do. And now they're vocalizing it. So incredible, incredible story. This is going to be a story that's going to get a lot of uh, uh, it's going to get a lot of thrust behind it. I, I certainly am going to be talking about it on the show tomorrow as well. But Anna, OK, uh, I wanted to have you on we had you on america's voice live yesterday and the problem with doing live tv is we never have enough time to get really into the meat of things right. so for our audience i'm going to play a short clip here of you speaking to justin amash representative who was just uh, he just left the republican party uh, he became an independent he was originally a freedom caucus advocate in fact i think he founded the one of the uh, representatives that founded the freedom caucus but he has become right. out staunchly against president trump here's a quick clip so I was there for you from the very beginning. I'm not sure how many people applauding his courage were, but I would like to say since that time, I have changed my position on you. And you have spent the last two years failing to do your job, which is to directly represent the popular will of your constituents. That is, my, that is your job. That's not my okay? job. No, I actually, I, I double checked online before I wrote that in my notes. So it is your job. My, it's on house.gov. You can read it yourself. My job is to uphold the Constitution. No, that's not that what house.gov That does. is my job. That's not what, I, those are not mutually exclusive. Do you realize that those are not mutually exclusive? They can be. Okay. That's why our system is designed not, the way Not in the way that you've behaved. Okay. At, at first, okay, so you called for the I could, I could go on listening to this because you are fantastic. And everybody should go check out Anna Timmer, Justin Amash online. She's got a YouTube channel. You'll find it. It will come straight up here. But uh, Anna, uh, quickly encapsulate. You worked for Justin Amash to get him elected originally. Tell us a little bit about that and then what the turn was for you. Sure. So uh, back in 2010, that was kind of the heyday of the Tea Party movement. There was a lot of energy behind um, going back to the roots of the Constitution, uh, going back to the roots of, of liberty, and really, you know, uh, a response to the election of Barack Obama, who was the, the farthest left president um, that we'd had, at least, you know, in recent memory. And um, so Justin Amash was a libertarian conservative, and, and he was riding in on that Tea Party wave. And so he had a lot of energy behind him, especially from a lot of young conservatives. So that was why I got involved. Um, you know, I, I really wanted somebody in there who was going to shake things up that wasn't going to be an establishment conservative. So he was the anti-establishment uh, candidate and that type of thing. So... I went door to door for him. I, I was very passionate and very energized by his campaign. And so a big part of why I went to his town hall was because of how disappointed uh, I was because I had supported him so strongly in the past. And um, I feel that he is such a hypocritical figure because he bills himself as a constitutional conservative. And I, I fell into that trap, and, and a lot of people did because he has this, you know, this type of intellectual narcissism, and um, that he has this unique ability 
to interpret the Constitution that other people don't have. That's kind of um, that's kind of how I've come come to see him. And he misses the spirit of the entire document, in my opinion. You know, this is a document created by and for people yeah. who are freeing themselves from tyranny so, and you know freeing themselves from elites. And so, right, right, and you know, we don't we don't need any more gatekeepers. I, I'm with you on that, and uh, we've got a commercial coming up here in a couple of minutes, and I want you, I want you to stick through the commercial. But talk a little bit about how his leaning towards more of a libertarian bent, although I don't think he's considered himself as a libertarian, and and that, and what you say in your words is that that political philosophy divests itself from sovereignty, and and the religious morality yeah. of our founding as well. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, well, he he, uh, I, I believe that he does align himself. Uh, pretty strongly with the Libertarian Party. He really doesn't hold almost any positions um, that, that, you know, that differ from the Libertarian Party. He's not strong on um, pro-life issues. He lost his right to life endorsement. And uh, he does not support securing the border. So that's, you know, that's kind of a big problem with Libertarian, uh, the Libertarian philosophy is that they miss the entire um, uh, religious morality that surrounded our founding. Because mm. when you have freedom of religion, that's one thing, but the Libertarian Party takes it the next step to freedom from religion. And when you have freedom from religion, then you're not going to care about things like abortion. The Libertarian Party, you know, does not have any position on um, being pro-life whatsoever in their platform, and Justin Amash has not stood up against abortion and you're not going to promote self-control which is necessary for self-governance and it's necessary for for sovereignty right right i had him on my panel at freedom fest uh, i think i mentioned that to you yesterday and i i asked him pointed blank i mean i was very very upfront with him and i said y you know you uh, and I want to get to this actually after the break. It's too long for a segue here. But uh, we're going we're gonna to talk more and uh, have a lot more discussion here with Anna Timmer regarding Justin Amash libertarianism and how we can all get involved and save the country. Uh, Dave Sussman here at Real Side Radio. We'll be right back, folks. Can't touch this. And welcome back. To, you know what? I love Animal House. Anytime there's an Animal House clip, I could just sit here and smile no matter what else is going on in the world. But... Uh, uh, Dave Sussman here, Real Side Radio. It is great to be with everybody. Hi, everybody in the Facebook chat room and across the interwebs and all over the place. And if you're not following us on uh, realside.com, you can hang out in the Facebook room. Just look for Real Side and uh, meet some new friends. Everybody's chatting in there. And if you'd like, you can also call in 855-732-5563. Took a great caller at the beginning of the hour here. But right now we have Anna Timmer, who is, uh, uh, I, I guess you can call yourself, Anna, a self-professed, uh, a citizen activist you're out there you want to talk about regular citizens getting involved in 2020 uh and uh, i love what you did with justin amash as i was about to talk about uh right before we were so rudely interrupted by commercials um that i had justin on my panel at freedom fest and i was asking him specifically you know like you you, you supposedly stood up for conservatism you stood up for this president and you don't uh, you don't believe uh, that uh, they spied on this president, but you're against spying. And all the proof that was out there, and he just, the machinations that he used, it was like the, watching the game of Twister, where he tried to support yep. himself without supporting the president and supporting the Constitution without supporting this president. It was weird. It was weird. And before yeah. I get into your, your activism, what is Justin Amash? What is his glitch right now? Well, I think the glitch is as simple of an explanation as the male ego. And uh, I Ooh, know a that's lot of people that's deadly. Have, <laughs> a lot of people have tried to really dig deep on, on trying to figure this out. And, I've, you know, I've known him, like I said, for almost 10 years, you know, from afar. And he came out very strongly, you know, in a virtue signaling way during the run up to the 2016 election against Trump. He right. did not like him. He had a personal distaste for him. He wasn't the only one, um, but he came out very strongly, kind of like the Mitt Romney feel, where he just doesn't like Trump on a personal level. He announced on Twitter that he would not vote for Trump in 2016. He has been in the Never Trump camp very firmly ever since. He never came around. You know, people like Ted Cruz, 
you know, they came around, Rand Paul, they came around, you know, because they're pragmatic. They care about the country. They want to work with the president because they feel that that's what's best for the people. Justin Amash couldn't do it. He couldn't swallow his pride and do it. And so, but he has his career to think about. And he had, you know, he's 39 years old. He has to think about where does he go from here. Is that all? He cannot swallow his pride. I really think that's it. I think it's. No, he, I'm, I, he's, he's only he's only 39. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, wow, he looks he looks a he's lot very older. Very young man. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, I think this is about him trying to um, reconcile his pride and not wanting to. Um, you know, go back on on the things he said against Trump years ago, and I think he really personally doesn't like the guy. Yeah, and he's also trying to preserve um, his goals, his political goals for the future, which I think are are fairly grandiose. Okay, let's talk politics. Uh, when we had you on America's Voice Live yesterday, you were talking about how uh, activist citizens. You don't have to run for politics. You don't have to be a candidate for an office. Most people work for a living. They're taking care of their families and their children and trying to get yeah. kids, you know, to the soccer field on Saturday mornings. And we just don't have time, realistically right. speaking. But at the same time, you still can make some changes. You and I, yesterday, we talked about what Scott Pressler is doing in Baltimore and, and, yeah. and, and everything else. From your standpoint right now, talk a little bit about that perspective and, and what it is that you're doing right now to get people involved. Right. And, uh, you know, what you just mentioned, that people work, that people have soccer games, I, I appreciate that totally. You know, I'm a business owner, I'm a mother, I'm very busy as well. Um, but I think that people have to stop viewing this as just another election. Um, it's, it's not the same as it's been in years past. The stakes are much, much higher, and people have to get their mindset into uh, almost a time of war, and I'm not trying to be hyperbolic, I'm not trying to exaggerate the point, um, but this is not, you know, a war where we take up arms, but it is a, you know, it's a war of ideas, and it's, you know, it's a cyber war. You know, a lot of these um, policy issues are being fought, you know, over the Internet, you know, we, we see you know, the, the climate panel that's going on right now, I mean, that's trying to influence the psyche of the American populace, and, and we have to stop waiting for other people to promote conservatism and, and win elections for us. We can't wait for our politicians to do this for us. We have to get out there and go door to door, and we have to meet people, and we have to talk to our friends and family, and we have to all get involved because otherwise, we're not going to recognize our country if we lose in 2020. In five years from now, we won't even recognize our country. Uh, most of our listeners and viewers, because we are online as well. Hi, folks. Uh, but uh, if you are sitting here and you're watching and you're listening and you're engaged, you obviously, to be watching and listening to our show, you must be engaged. You're educated on the issues. But what do you do, Anna, to suggest to somebody to take it from that next step, getting away from the keyboard, getting away from the radio stations and, and the TV, and, and getting out the door to go where to go? Where do, where do you go? What is that first step? Sure. So um, I recently, a few months ago, uh, came across a group called Engage the Right. And if you just put that into Google, Engage the Right, you will get directed to their website. And they have put together a handbook that uh, I think it's like 30 pages long. It's, it's not that long of a read. And it goes into explicit detail for how people can get involved in their local politics on the local level. So how they can form committees you know, in their own cities, how they can get involved, you know, with the, the local Republican Party. Um, it, it lays out a lot of very simple steps that everyday people can do. Uh, like I mentioned on uh, the program yesterday, Scott Pressler has a project called Letters to Voters, and that's even simpler. That's something that takes an hour of your time. He is asking Republican voters to write five letters uh, to people, to independent voters in battleground states, um, you know, just talking about the issues. And, and he gives you the script to write, and he just asks that you provide the stamp. And even just as simple as calling up five uh, friends or family members that are more moderate, that are sitting on the fence, 
and asking them out to coffee and talking to them about the issues and just staying vocal about it. I mean, these are simple ways, obviously, Everybody, you know, can do a whole lot more. You can get involved in campaigns. You know, an election year is is just a few months away. And I encourage everyone to get involved with a local campaign if they have a couple hours a week. And you you can knock on a few doors. You can can make a few cold calls. And And that's engagetheright.com. That's engagetheright.com. Okay, and and in our last in our last minute ninety seconds here, I want to get into the juicy stuff with you. You became an internet sensation when you went to that town hall. You stood up against Justin Amash, and obviously there were a lot of Justin Amash supporters in that audience there. But the video of you went viral. What happened? What was that like for you? Uh, It was absolutely terrifying to be. To be perfectly honest, um, I, I'm not a very, uh, I'm, a, I'm a pretty private person. I'm not a very outgoing person. And, and uh, when I realized how many people had driven from across the other side of the state, um, you know, kind of an instant fan club for Justin Amash, and, and they were shouting down anyone who uh, spoke against him in that town hall environment. And so I, I, I was very nervous, but, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, God was with me as well when I was speaking, and I, I was able to, to get out what I wanted to say without faltering, but it was it was definitely a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Well, sure. you, you, considering the fact that you, you weren't in the limelight and, uh, you're, you know, you're not a famous person, uh, you were extremely articulate in front of a very cr- big crowd, relatively speaking, um, and uh, any any uh, pushback from people? Any Obviously, you know, people comment on YouTube. Have you read all the comments? What what was that like? Well, uh, I was blessed that in in the fact that it mostly went viral in the kind of conservative end. Um, the first twelve hours were pretty rough because um, I, I my video was first on MSNBC Hardball. Oh boy! And it wasn't it, it wasn't <laughs> anywhere else. <laughs> so I spent I think maybe two minutes reading the comments under the MSNBC clip, and it was just all horrible and so i i just i just shut my phone off and i said i'm done with that and then breitbart picked it up and uh some other conservative outlets picked it up and it it went viral from there on on the conservative side you're smart to do that uh yeah tell us what tell everybody where they can go find your youtube channel watch the entire thing real quickly yeah, so you can just look up my name, uh, Anna Timmer, on YouTube, and uh, you'll be able to find my channel from there. I'm on Twitter, at Veritas Sola. Great, great. Thanks so much, Anna. Greatly appreciate you taking the time, and we'll have you back on again real soon. Take care of yourself, and thank you yeah. for everything you're doing. All right. And yeah, I'll, thanks da- for having me on. You're very welcome. Dave Sussman here at Real Side Radio. We'll be right back after the break. And Dave Sussman back with you. Real Side Radio. You can give us a phone call at 855-732-5563. We're also live on Facebook and our website, realside.com. Dot com is where you can find everybody chatting in the Facebook room. And uh, if you haven't heard me before, I come in every couple of weeks, sit in for Joe. I am on America's Voice Live daily from 10 to 12. Uh, It is America's Voice News. And you can download that app uh, on Roku and Amazon Fire and and, Amazon. and Apple TV and all of the other places as well. And uh, my co-host Amanda Head and I, we just uh, comment and talk about the news and clips. And one of the things that I saw today was from the city of San Francisco, the Board of Supervisors visors, voted unanimously on Tuesday, yesterday, to declare the National Rifle Association, the NRA, a domestic terrorist organization. The San Francisco Board of Supervisors and the resolution claims that the NRA incites and arms those who would use guns in acts of mass terrorism driven by hatred. And it reads in part, whereas reported hate crimes have increased by double digits since 2015, whereas where are over 393 million guns in the United States, which exceeds the country's current population, and whereas our elected representatives, including the president, have taken an oath swearing to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, blah dee blah dee blah dee blah uh, What they are doing is that they are resolving that the city and the county of San Francisco intends to declare that the NRA is a domestic terrorist organization. Ah, San Francisco. 
you know, I, I can't even go into the city anymore. I'm sorry. It, you know, if you guys are so focused on this leftist agitprop that you're seeing from Mother Jones and the Daily Cause and MSNBC and CNN, and this is where your focus is, and this is where you're spending your time on these meaningless, these meaningless resolutions that don't do anything other than just propel the extreme leftists to be voted in again by the extreme leftist voters. What are you doing, people? Don't you have some needles to clean up? Don't you have some poop to clean up in the streets? I don't know. Anyway, we've got a caller actually from San Francisco. I don't know if it's about this issue or not, but David from San Francisco, welcome. How are you tonight? Oh, yeah. Hey, you're, uh, you're filling in for Joe, right? Is it Dave? Yeah, Dave Sussman. How are you, my friend? Not too bad. I'm another Dave. David from San Francisco. I'm sorry you to know, hear that. I, I got it. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, no, it's a great city. It's it's a real city. And in fact, you know, if you think about it, most cities across America, they're filled with these corporations, which are just like giant leeches that suck all of the money out of town to their corporate headquarters. And you have a local restaurant or a local, you know, bar or a local uh, shoe shine parlor or hat maker or you know, walking stick polisher. I mean, you got all kinds of different small hot, uh, shops out here, and it's a real city with a real economy. And that's one of the things that people like about it the most. And uh, but yeah, yeah, I I used to have a traveling salesman kind of job, and when you go out in you know throughout the Midwest, for example, and you see how many places are stuck with a corporate gas station and a corporate chain, you know, Seven Eleven and a yeah, all the grocery stores are corporate. There's no local, local, local. That's how you keep the money in town. So, but um, yeah, the real reason I called though, um, here, let me uh, take a quick look at my notes because uh, I was, yeah, what I was interested in, you know, if you look at in economics, you're familiar with the expression "externalized cost." Externalized cost, okay, cost outside yeah. of your control. But, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's basically it. You know, if you pollute something into the river, mm -hmm. um, that's externalized cost. You pass the, the your cleanup costs are passed on to somebody else, right? <laughs> to just hide it and dump it is externalized cost. If you've got an assembly line and they're churning out widgets so fast that people are getting carpal tunnel in three weeks' time, so you've got to constantly hire new people because their wrists are still good. Okay. Um, you know, that's externalized cost if you do not pay the medical bills for those people, right? So when you start looking at these major corporations that are leaving externalized costs all over the world, people that are injured, pollution all over, you can't go fishing anymore because they poisoned the rivers, um, you know, that's externalized cost. And to, to give tax breaks to companies, that don't clean up after themselves means that you're not only not forcing them to clean it up, but you're letting them keep the money. What's the question, and, Dave? Uh, oh, well, I heard you interviewing that woman uh, with the Republican Party. I wonder how they stand on that. Standing on what exactly? Uh, tax breaks on corporations? Yeah, externalized costs. Okay. I mean, well, to me, it's fraud, right? Well, let, let, mean, let, me, let, me, let me just say this. Let me, let me ask you a question and try to be concise as, uh, as, as, as much as possible here. To you, uh, what is a corporation? Uh, is, is, it, is it some monolith, faceless monolith, or is it made up of people that work in your community? Um, it, for the top down, uh, the top guy is always in charge, and, you know, everybody has to obey, obey, obey. I don't know. That seems like a sorry imitation of a human being. Um, I don't understand so, what that I means. Mean, if you, if you, if you uh, let me, let me ask you, Dave. Dave, you're in San Francisco. We only have a few minutes here, so I don't mean to keep to interject here. But this is this is radio, so we got commercial coming up. If you start, if you have an idea and you want to start a business, and you take money out of your house, or you borrow uh, from your family, or you save up for ten years to start a business, and then you hire people, and you have an idea, you have a concept, you have a product. Don't you want those yeah, people to work for you yeah. and for you to 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 tell them exactly? what to do for your company to, to, to survive and to be successful? Nice little local business, yeah. 
no unfair trade practices, you know, we're dumping product at dollar okay, store. But, but you're, you're, I understand where you're going with this, but what you're saying is that if you are as a corporation now, you're working in San Francisco, which is one of the highest tax cities in the, one of the highest tax states in the country, aren't you, to, to, to make sure that you stay in oh, business, aren't you going to try and find a way to try and save costs on your taxes? Well, if you actually get something for your taxes, like I, I appreciate paying taxes and getting clean water out of the tap. I appreciate paying taxes and having uh, every time I use the toilet, it's not sitting near me. Okay, and it actually gets cleaned up before it gets disposed of. So what what so percentage what percentage should corporations pay at? What rate? Fifty percent, seventy percent, ninety percent? Out here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to recommend a, 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 a something to read on economics called Narco Alago. Narco Alago. Uh, I'm, I'm asking you a question. Uh, no, no, no. As 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 a, as a citizen of San Francisco that has a, a obviously a problem with corporations and companies coming into San Francisco, maybe they're a chain, maybe they're you know a brand that we know of, whatever it is. You have an issue with them. What should they be taxed? What percentage? Well, the true cost of uh, damages. In other words, that's not an answer. Trucks rolling by every day. How much do they tear up the roads with their trucks? Uh, do they have smokestacks? Do they have um, you know so many people out on the sidewalk every morning? Uh, you know, coming into work. With okay, so we should we should have a government that's going to go into every single company and determine that exactly that the trucks that are driving down the road are are, are going to be taxed a certain percentage, and the and 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 the companies that are polluting the air with airplanes and travel they should be taxed a certain percentage. Who determines that? Who becomes well, the you're arbiter? Not, you're, not, you're, not, you're not answering that as a business person. I mean, what are, what are the each individual itemized? costs to the city, you know, water production, sewage, uh, you know, egress, uh, roads and bridges. Right. So isn't that uh, what taxes state, are for now? Rights of way. Beg pardon? Isn't that what taxes are for now? Isn't that what we do with no, our taxes now for infrastructure? Yeah. Right. And so what the, the scam is with the, uh, the, the with Chicago School of Economics is, is that they think they can give away externalized costs to all of these corporations as an incentive to create jobs. Well, they'll create the jobs in China, poison them, and run away with okay, the money. Okay, but when, when you hire people, when you years. hire somebody, we've only got a minute left here. Uh, when you hire somebody, do they not pay taxes themselves? Do they not go out and buy products and services and get internet and buy a house? Guy? You mean you want the little guy to pay for it, not the big guy? No, no, no. A corporation is made up of little people. Are there money hoarders? Excuse me. I'm sorry. No, that's really what it is. No, is you're, uh, if you if you don't, okay they don't now now it. now you're now you're kind of out there. All right. I, I think I think you're you're marginalized yourself with no, that last statement there. If you okay, okay, Dave. If you're if if you are hiring a company, if you're hiring a company. All right, and you have 50,000, 5,000, five people. It doesn't make a difference whether you're a small business or a big business. Those people now have jobs. They go out and they buy products and services. They go buy cars. They put their kids in private schools. That pays tuition to the teachers. This is what people do. It's called working. And you've got some idea in your mind, this ultra leftist uh, idea in your mind, this Marxist almost idea in your mind, that there is some limited size pie in this world and that everybody should get an equal amount and that a corporation is evil in its approach. For what? A corporation is made up of people. It's made up of people. That's all it is. And yes, you have a boss that makes a lot of money because this is the person that he or she decided to go out and take risk. And that's what risk is. It's called capitalism, risking your capital for a return. And most people don't get a return. I can go on forever on this. Thanks for your call, Dave. We're going to be back here after the break. Dave Sussman here at Real Side Radio.